So what happens when you hear, could you take me flying? Hey, could we go flying? I really want to go flying. Could you take me flying? Could we go flying? Could you take me flying? Why can't we go flying? You said you were going to take me flying. Take me flying. Take me flying. What do you do? Taking kids flying is just an awesome experience, both for you, the pilot, and for the kid, of course. I mean, it's, you know, it, you're opening them up into a whole new world, and the worst thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna end up paying for another private pilot's license. Hey, things could be worse. There are three things you can do to make flying with kids a successful and enjoyable experience, both for you, the pilot, and, of course, for the kid. Number one, give your flight a mission. Recently, we went down to the Outer Banks around Emerald Isle, and I took a friend of mine's uh, daughter flying, and she go. just loved it. She had wanted to go. In fact, we were gonna fly from Washington, D.C. down to Emerald Isle, but the weather was IFR, and I didn't really think that she would enjoy the experience being in IFR the first time in a small plane, or maybe the second time in a small plane. So she drove down with her mother, and I went ahead and flew down, and that turned out to be a really great decision. I had a mission for the flight, and what we were gonna do is is we're gonna fly along the beach at about a thousand feet and take pictures of the house we're renting and take pictures of the beach and then after we did our little photo mission we we're gonna circle back fly back along the beach and then I wanted to fly over a little town that uh, I used to sail in and out of called Oriental North Carolina and I wanted her to take pictures of the town we were flying over so she had a job to do and that really took the focus off of anything that could be scary or anything that could be alarming. She was really kind of focused on the task. Nice. And we'll do another pass down the beach. See if she's there. The second thing you want to do is keep them involved and participating in the actual flight itself. So we had our mission to do, which was a photo mission along the beach and then of that little town Oriental, North Carolina. But the second thing we did is I kept her involved in the pre-flight and also I briefed her on the checklist and we read through the checklist before we even started the engine. And her job during the flight was to read the checklist back to me, which was actually really helpful. But it gave her a role in the flight where she was an active participant. And again, she was busy. So anything that could have scared her or kind of startled her didn't even come into the, the picture because she had a job to do and she was really task focused. And that really worked out well. Before we taxi to the runway, we'll do a run up and I'll show you what that is. That's just to make sure everything's working right with the engine and all that. And that's that next checklist that you have there. So we can do our run up right before we enter the runway here. And see the little directional signs where it says runway eight? How are you turning? With my feet. So I, I don't want to touch these, right? I mean, yeah, you don't really want to. It's well, okay. I don't want to move the plane. <laughs> okay. All right, go to runway, go to uh, engine run up checklist, okay. please. Heading and brakes. Heading and brakes are set. We're at 240, or 235, 235, and heading and brakes are set. Okay, mixture learn, leaned for taxi. Uh, that's going to be mixture full rich. Go. Uh, power 1700 RPM. Power 1700 RPM. And now what we're going to do is just to make sure all the systems work here under full power here. All right, so power 1700. Magnetos check. All right, magnetos. We have a good drop in the right mag. And we have a good drop in the left mag. And right after I make my final call, just start the final approach checklist. All right. Bluefoot traffic, 221 Frankie, turning final, runway 3, Bluefoot final approach checklist, please. All right, fuel selector, full tank. Fuel selectors on both. Fuel pump as required. Fuel pump is off. Brakes off. Brakes off. Mixture rich. Mixture is full rich. Carburetor heat on. Carburetor heat is on. Airspeed 80, 90 IAS flaps up. What's airspeed flaps down? Uh, 70, 80 IAS flaps down. All right, that's flaps. indicated airspeed. Flaps are down and airspeed's a little fast, 95. Short field 70 IAS flaps down. All right. Trim set. Trim is set. Airspeed coming. Airspeed is 84. Flaps are full. Over traffic 221. Thank you for final runway 3, Bob. And 
there we go, there's our speed 77. That's it. 76, perfect, that's it. 74. 72, good, good, good. All right, make sure your feet are off the pedals there. On the center line. Close enough. <laughs> and it wasn't jarring, and the awesome landing indicator yep. stayed on. Have you almost bounced down? Oh my gosh, I've had some whopper bad ones. And the third thing that just made this such a thrill and such an experience is she took the controls. Now, of course, I had my, I had my hands on the controls the entire time. The controls weren't out of my sight. She didn't have the airplane, so don't get alarmed but she took the control yoke and actually played around with making a couple shallow turns, you know, keeping the wings, you know, level and bringing them back and getting that feel of what the airplane feels like. So I had her do a couple shallow turns and then, you know, the plane started slowly porpoising up and down and she really got a good feel for her, how tricky it is to hold altitude. And maybe she did it for about 45 seconds and said, hey, that's enough. But she really, really loved it. And it was a fantastic experience. So if you're over 50, get out there, get in the air, subscribe to the channel, click the notification buttons. You know what to do. Subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching. <laughs>